Hello and welcome to worship. My name is uh, Pastor Doug Walters and I am the pastor here at First Presbyterian Church of Claremont. And uh, we are excited to have you with us today, uh, worshiping with us as we as we can, uh, from wherever we, we can and whenever we can. And uh, we, will, uh, we will still make our joyful noises today. Uh, friends, we hope that you had um, a wonderful week. Um, and uh, just wanted to remind you that before we begin service, this is a communion service. And so uh, if you would like, you are welcome to, uh, to grab your, your juice or whatever you're using for the cup um, or your, and your bread and have those ready for later in the service when we will, when we will use them. So if you want to go ahead and grab that before you continue, that might be a good idea. Um, other announcements. Um, this being January 3rd, uh, we uh, just want to announce that uh, uh, our final session meeting of this class will, will take place next week on January 10th. Um, and as always, everybody is uh, certainly invited to, to attend those. Um, we also continue a lot of our uh, weekly services to the community. Uh, so we, we still have our, our weekly Sunday meal. Uh, if you want to call into the church, leave a message um, with your name, your number, and how many meals you would like, on Sunday morning, they will be available for pickup uh, at no charge, and the pickup time will be between 11 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Uh, so if, uh, if that's something that you would like to take advantage of, please, please do. Um, other than that, I think um, I will, uh, it's probably worth noting that I will be on vacation here, um, and so we'll be unavailable for, for certain routine things Obviously, still feel free to call me if there's an emergency, um, but I will be um, taking vacation here. Um, and I will be back next week. Uh, we got it all covered. You, you're not going to miss worship or anything like that. It's, everything's going to should be uh, pretty, pretty similar for you um, in terms of your experience in the church and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I will, I will be on vacation for, for a short amount of time to catch my breath because Christmas is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and friends, uh, as we come into this space, I recognize that, especially if you're not here in the sanctuary, that it's, it's difficult sometimes to enter into an attitude of worship. But however we are able to do that, let's take a moment, reset, and try to be as present as we can in the community of God as we come together to worship. And so, friends, let us call ourselves to worship in our responsive readings. Come, join the search for all God will reveal. We are the church, committed to an encounter with mystery. God is the light through the scale of our fears. The glory of God has risen upon us. The gospel of God reveals God's grace. We share in the promise of Jesus Christ. We gather together in spirit to lift up our eyes. Our hearts thrill to the sight and our lips rejoice. Through us, the wisdom of God will be made known. There is rich variety to meet each one where we are. The way rivers of truth surrounds us, lonely and confidential, we approach our God. Thank you. we come before God in this new year, a, a time that is often used for new beginnings, hoping for a new beginning as we shed off the imperfect parts of ourselves and seek uh, the perfection that can be found in Christ. Friends, let us go to God in prayer as we say together the confession. God of sovereigns and commoners, we confess that we are often more impressed with famous people than we are with your amazing glory. The rulers of the earth are more real to us than the one who reigns over time and eternity. Your priorities are not foremost in our lives. 
we reach for power and popularity more than for justice for the poor. We are more focused on prosperity than on relief for the oppressed. Our pursuits do not satisfy. Save us from their fragmenting grip in our lives. Cause a new epiphany among us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, God will judge us with righteousness and deliver us from the oppressive greed to which we have succumbed. The showers of God's blessings will fall on us like rain on new mown grass. Peace will abound in the hearts of those who give help to the poor and to the needy. God commissions us as fellow heirs with Christ to fulfill the mission given to the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. illumination today. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them that the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How do you find your way to Christ? Back in the first century, this was a a very real question. Without phones or, or mailers or Facebook event posts, if Mary couldn't post staged newborn photos on her timeline, how were people to know that Jesus the Messiah had been born? Today's reading is about a group of people that had figured it out. We don't know exactly where they came from. We just know that they came from the East. 
We don't know exactly how many of them there were, we just know that they brought three gifts. And we don't know exactly who they were. We've given them various names throughout the years. We've called them wise men, though we do not know if they were wise or men. We have called them kings, and though it makes for a good song, that's nowhere close to the word that Matthew used to describe them. And we have called them magi, which, while very close to the word Matthew uses, doesn't tell us a whole lot on its own. As best as I can figure, Matthew really means that these folks were somehow associated with astrology. And we can figure all that out since that was what spurred their trip on in the first place. As they came from the east, they asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. We can actually get a lot of info about them from this sentence, which has led some to conclude that these wise men from the east were in fact Zoroastrians. This is a religion that is practiced even to this day. And they have a complex series of beliefs like all religions do, but Zoroastrianism really draws on astrology and observing the stars. And they also have an understanding of the Messiah, or at least a Messiah, which may be why they were so willing to follow the star and come and worship this newborn child. And that last part is key. They came to worship this newborn child. A Jewish boy, uh, the Jewish Messiah. Even though they themselves are not Jewish. Pay attention to this detail. Because Matthew is including it for an important reason. For the hopes and the expectations for this boy have grown beyond just the Jewish people. This young boy is the hope for all people. That Christ is not just a gift to the Jews, but is a gift to the world. And these magi with their gifts in hand represent the very real, very tangible expansiveness of the gospel. The good news is not by, by its nature constrained, but resists constraint. It seeks to, to grow and to expand boundaries. It does not confine itself to a singular path as if you must be Jewish and in good standing with the temple and observant of the law and this and that and the other thing that seek to limit and make exclusive this message of God. The message of God is not naturally limited. Indeed, it exists for all who hear it. The Magi heard it. They heard it and they came running. They weren't Jewish. Maybe they didn't even know what Jews believed, but they, they listened. They followed God's leading and, and it led them to Christ. Understand what this means. Because this was a big deal in the day. Just as it was a big deal when Paul stood up and said that non-Jewish Christians didn't need to be circumcised or follow the Torah. Just as it was during the Inquisitions or the Reformation or even as it is today with our own self-inflicted American Christian ethic. An ethic that we have exported all around the world. It should be a reminder to us. That the expected conventions need not apply in your relationship with God. There is no purity test here. There's a newer show out on Disney Plus called The Mandalorian. If you're into Star Wars, you might have heard of it. And the central character, who frankly is part of something of a cult, early on in the series was fond of saying... This is the way. This is the way as, as if there is but one single way to do something. And, and that's what everyone in this group would say. This is the way. This is the way. But what he found out 
after he'd gotten some experience, is that that wasn't the only way. What the story reminds us is that there isn't just the way. There isn't just one way, but, but many ways. It, if there was only one way, one accessible way, then things would be simple. We'd stay on the way. We'd never depart, and we'd all be perfect. Easy peasy. But that is not the case. For all of us are imperfect souls down here. There isn't just the way. And that is some good news. Because it means that whatever meandering path that we lead, no matter how inefficient it may have been, as long as it leads ultimately to our final destination, then it doesn't matter. As long as we get there. There are many paths and journeys that you may have taken in life to get to where you are, but remember this. The pathways to God are not linear. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you never strayed far from the faith, whether you grew up in it, or whether it is entirely new to you. Whether you live far to the east, know that in the end, it does not matter what road you took to get to God. What matters is that you have found God. So wherever you are, whatever you have to do, whatever you have done, whatever stars have to align in order for you to find your path to God, I hope that you take it. I hope that faith spurs you to motion as you seek that destination that God is leading you to. And may you share the final destination with the Magi and all those who set out after God. In this Christmas season, may you find the child who became the Savior of the world, God's only Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need not take just the one linear path that we think we ought to take, as long as we get to God. But friends, may we affirm those things that do draw us together and unite us. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed as we affirm those beliefs. And God's people said, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As always, the challenging part of sharing this space together is, and sharing this distance apart from one another is the sharing of our joys and the, in our concerns, of, of being able to truly uh, give you a sense that, that we are caring for you in our prayers. And so if, if you do have something that you would like to, us to pray for, please let us know and we will do so. But also let us uh, be confident that when we speak and pray in times of silence, that even if we do not know what your prayers specifically are, that we still offer you prayers as we are able. And with that in mind, friends, let us go to God as we say our pastoral prayer.
God of the cosmos. By your outstretched hand, we have been shown the way to Bethlehem, to the birthplace of our redemption. For into the darkness you have set your light in the sky as a beacon to all who would seek to find you. Guide us along our paths as we set out to follow your star, that we will always find our way to you. When we grow weary, give us strength. When we wander off course, direct us in the way that we should go. When we struggle to start the journey, give us the gumption to go forth. When we have doubts along the journey, steal our resolve and our faith that we might step confidently to your side. Help us to care for one another and to walk alongside others in the journey. Lord, we turn to you with the prayers of our community, of our nation, and of our world. Hear now our prayers in our time of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers and guide us along the path to you, that in the end we might come to find your Son and to celebrate the joy that he brings to this world. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. The Magi from the, came from the east to worship the newborn Messiah, and as they did that, they brought gifts. Gifts in order to celebrate the joy of Christ's coming. We also come to worship the child who came to be our Savior. We come to worship, and, and we too bring gifts. The Magi brought gold and frankincense and, and myrrh. We bring whatever that we have at hand, be it our hard work, our time, our finances, or our love. We bring gifts not out of obligation or custom, but out of celebration for the one who has, who is, and who will be again. Friends, let us bring our gifts before the Lord today. dedicate our gifts. We reach for the boundless riches of Christ, even as we give the tithes and offerings we have pledged. An abundance of things does not satisfy, and the wealth of nations cannot be by peace. Therefore, we join our efforts in the church to make a difference in the world, not through instruments of oppression but through the love and power of love. Employ our gifts in the service of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Friends, welcome to this communion space. We will begin our time here at the Lord's table singing our communion hymn. We Three Kings, verses 1 through 4. into the presence of a child born in Bethlehem is that Bethlehem itself means the house of bread as if the bread that would be broken for all of humanity was born and made right here in Bethlehem and that bread welcomes us in to sit at this table and to sup it is a welcoming call to all to take and to eat and so wherever you are from, whether from Bethlehem or from lands far away, know that you have a place at this table, that Christ invites all who trust him to share in the feast which he has prepared. Friends, let us pray as we come to this table to give thanks. Eternal God, it is by symbols that this day has any meaning. For what was important to the Magi was not the gifts themselves, though gold, frankincense, and myrrh be well received. But what matters is the symbolism behind bringing a gift in celebration for the coming of the Messiah. What was important was not the monetary value of the gifts, but the struggle in bringing such gifts from afar. 
so too does symbolism matter around this table. For what is important is not this bread, leavened or unleavened, nor is it this cup, whether wine or juice or any other fruit of the vine, but what matters is the symbolism behind it, that these represent the feast of your Son, to be reminded of the time Christ laid down his life for his friends. It is the symbolism that this bread and this cup represent the body and the blood that have been shed and poured out for us. And it is the symbolism behind the fact that this meal has been made available to us. For you have welcomed us in and made for us a place at your table. May we come and take our place. May we receive your grace with open and glad hearts. And may we seek to make room at this table for anyone who might wish to sit with us. For all are invited. And all who are invited and respond are sister and brother and fellow guests at your table. May your mercy satisfy our hunger and thirst this day. And may we be united around this table as your people, ever praying the words that Christ had taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, was sitting at table with his followers. And during the meal he took the bread, and broke it, and said, This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and pouring it out, he said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving grace of our risen Lord until he comes again. Christ bids us come, take our place at the table, and receive the gifts. And so, friends, take and eat, for these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. let us pray. Eternal Lord of all, we give thanks for your wisdom today. We give thanks that through Jesus we are able to see and to understand a part of your plan for creation. As we draw tight circles around ourselves, making ever more exclusive groups, content to exclude more and more people, you have sought to enlarge the circle. You were not content to be the God of one people, but are the Lord and creator of all people. My neighbor's people as well as my own, my enemy's people as well as my own. You rule over the nations with mercy and might. You judge as a parent, not as a tyrant. 
and you have sought to draw all your children to yourself. Merciful God, we give thanks that there is a place in your circle for us. Amen. Friends, let us continue this time as we finish our communion hymn, singing verses 5 and again with verse 1 of We Three Kings. Thank you.